And welcome to the Libertarian Affiliate Spotlight, a production of the Libertarian Party Affiliate Support Committee, Valerie Sarwak as chair. And of course, the Libertarian National Committee, Joe Bishop Henchman chair. As always tonight, John Gapso on the big board. He's the one who will give you the graphics and the website. Makes it fun. I'm your host, Pat Ford. And tonight, well, we're going to focus a little bit on the Libertarian Party Affiliate Support Committee. So joining me tonight is, in fact, Valerie Sarwak, the chair. And uh, we'd like to welcome Valerie. And we're, the, the, the focus tonight, where it's usually on, say, affiliates, best practices, affiliates, uh, it, it, the unique features of an individual affiliate, whether it be a county or state, or potentially soon an international affiliate. Tonight, we're going to talk about the Affiliate Support Committee, its role, and its place in the libertarian firmament, as it were. Valerie, welcome to the show, and, and thanks for your support of this. We, uh, we're we about four or five weeks into it, and uh, we're starting to get our sea legs Uh and before we go tonight, we have a lineup of three states for the next three weeks, uh, pretty much a cross-section of the libertarian movement. Uh, but we'll get into that at the very end. But again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm so, so excited. So give us a little bit about, of your backstory. I mean, obviously, we know Nick uh, as a longtime chair of the party. Uh, mm -hmm. You've uh, you've ascended to the libertarian, uh, if you will, the, uh, the LNC, the Libertarian National Committee. Uh, talk about your motivations what causes you're involved in in addition to asc and then let's give us a sense of the mission of the affiliate support committee okay well um i uh i'm a dirty leftist right um i joined the party after i don't know if nick and i were married um at the point when i joined the party officially um but i had voted for obama and uh, i'm an, a big anti-war person and when Guantanamo Bay remained open when we were still in Afghanistan. And hey, both of those things are still happening after what, how many more years was that? Um, I got fed up and I said, they're, they're all lying to us. So, and he's like, I've been trying to tell you this since we started dating, you know, um, we'll be married 11 years this year. Um, but we started dating in 2005. So there was a, a long buildup of me realizing like Ron Paul was actually right. And uh, Obama was not. Um, but what was the next question? I'm a little yeah, no, just no, 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 no worries, no worries. Uh, you know, it's um, what other roles do you do you share on the LNC? And I guess uh, what was your motivation for getting involved at the national level? Um, you know, I don't think I have an actual like I want this. My big driving point was to get more women and children involved because. I always felt like it was me and all of the kid, all of our kids, you know, always everywhere, and nobody else was doing that. Um, but since I've joined the LNC, I've been so busy that that's kind of it's. I, I feel bad about this because that was like my driving force. Um, I've kind of lost the focus on doing that, um, and I was hoping that affiliate support would, you know, help guide that. But I've been so involved with the affiliates, which is wonderful. Um, I talk to a state chair or somebody from an affiliate every single day, if not like five a day. Today, I think I talked to, geez, probably 10 people um, from different affiliates, state chairs and local level affiliates. And, you know, showing up and being present, that's also a way to say, hey, this is a place for women. This is a place for children. This is a place for people who don't exactly look like everybody else. Um, and so, you know, that's probably going to be our next focus of the next level of uh, progress right. for the support committee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's do you get the sense as a result that folks are getting a better understanding of nationals roles and at the same time beginning to recognize the importance of other affiliates that we that we're less, uh, if you will, an amalgamation of. 50 state affiliates and a couple of DCs and a few others uh, and more of a party as a result. Yeah. You know, I think that we're really, I don't want to say strengthening the bond. I feel like I say that a lot, but it's kind of jargony. Um, we're making a more cohesive uh, unit and I have a wonderful state chair uh, in Oklahoma that is like, what can I do to help Arkansas? What can I do to help Missouri, you know, and I think that's just so great. And there's been already talks about uh, several states doing joint conventions. And I think, you know, more working together mm -hmm. is good for everyone because we're all used and, you know, with this contest, it's about shared resources and best practices, what works for you and how, how does this make my life better? And how does this make your 
uh, affiliate easier to work work with and what are you doing to ease this and um we had this problem and how are you fixing it instead of just being like you know and i and this is another it's kind of a balancing act where a lot of the affiliates don't want anybody from national to even talk to them right because it's like hands off but at the same time you have to balance that with okay well we want to help you but we also don't want to step on your toes and this is what we can do to help and this is you know how this is working for another affiliate so maybe you might want to try that and i've set up several state chairs with each other because um you know chris lucini in new mexico for example got like 15 people to run for office just by knocking on their doors and that doesn't work for everyone he's very charismatic as we all know but you know there's different ways of maybe you didn't even think about knocking on somebody's door so there's been a lot of that where i've said um, what is it? Knowledge matching, I guess, with different state chairs and um, different local affiliate uh, chairs and county chairs and things. I say, well, this worked for this person. Let me give you their number and see if you can talk to them and see if they, maybe they have something, some tips to give you or some motivation, even. You know. Right, 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 right. Talk to us about the the makeup of the committee. Who, uh, you know, in fact, by the way, just as an editorial note, Kevin Obi from Oklahoma is going to be on this show a week from tonight. And we're going to talk just about that, about different outreach efforts he's going to have amongst amongst states as well as some of their best practices. But talk to us about the, the composition of the committee and if folks individually want to volunteer or get involved, you know, who across the libertarian spectrum can they reach out to? Well, uh, Pat, you're on the committee. Um, so <laughs> Um, the committee is uh, me, myself, I'm chair, um, Dave Valente, who is the former chair of West Virginia, uh, Francis Wenton, who is the former chair of two terms ago of uh, Montana, um, but now the region one representative. Um, why'd you do this? Now, I had my second COVID shot today, so my brain is like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we, gonna, we get that, yep. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Demarest from Nebraska, and he's on the LSLA, as are you, right? Um, Ken Molman, the current vice chair of the party, is uh, is on the committee too. And who did I forget? T.J. Ferreira, the executive director of California. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And, and so, what is the mission, if you will, of the affiliate support committee, from your perspective? Well, I think the mission is to. I'm going to say it again because I don't want to say it. <laughs> Strengthen the bond between national and the affiliates. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, we do need to be more cohesive without stepping on the toes of the affiliates. And right. uh, you know, I, I spoke to um, to somebody today. Uh, I'm not going to name names on this one um, about how each state is basically a different car and we're all trying to get to the same place. And some of us, some of the cars drive a little slower. Some of them are a little older. Um, you know, you're originally from New Jersey. Maybe that's a Camaro, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the problem is not the car. The problem is not who's driving the car. The problem is not the radio station playing on the car because each state is different. Each state needs a different car to get to where they're going. And mm -hmm. national can't say, no, everybody has to have a Camaro or everybody has to have a BMW right. or like, no, but everybody has to drive a train, even though this is a, just my roads, you know? Um, and the fact of the matter is we need to be the best mechanics that we can be um, and not worry about what's playing on the radio or how much rust is under the hood. Um, the fact that we just, we need to get the car, we all need to meet at that parking lot and, and right. get the job done. And that's, I think that's a goofy way of telling you the mission of the affiliate support committee, but we're all trying to get to the same place. And I'm just trying to help you be a better mechanic. <laughs> no, absolutely. And that's the libertarian part, national party is not some overarching organization mm -hmm. and that's <laughs> say the, the, uh, the New York Yankees and then we're some affiliate teams. We're, we are ultimately independent organizations that work in, ostensibly in cooperation with each other. And so to, to the degree that the affiliate support committee can share institutional knowledge, best practices, provide, you know, provide contests with, with, you know, which motivate people towards that central goal. Um, you know, that's, that's all part and parcel of the effort. Um, it's not to dictate to anyone you know, how, you know, and 
the, the individual affiliates are not, in fact, being detained the last time we saw. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the key is we've got a, a, a group of members in the committee, any one of which are available to reach out to, if in mm -hmm. fact you're motivated to support either financially or on a volunteer basis, or just in helping your chapter, your affiliate, your group uh, participate in any one of the programs that are going to be offered throughout the year. Um, you're in the final stages, uh, all irony intended, because <laughs> I'm one of the I'm the final stage. But talk to me about the affiliate in a box contest and and how that's gone and and what your what your what your experience has been with it? Uh, the affiliate in the box contest was actually very surprising. Um, when I was appointed chair, I thought, okay, we're going to do this, and you know, we're going to we're going to do this ourselves. But that became very silly to me right away. I'm um, thinking, like I said, uh, you don't all drive the same car, so you're not all going to say like this is the perfect box for me. And in, in um, you know, what do I know? I, I don't run an affiliate, so I need some knowledge on this. I need some guidance. And so um, I think we, we agreed to outsource it to the affiliates because they know what they need best. And we got seven very different submissions, very, very different. Um, and they're currently being graded uh, and ranked. And uh, I made them all anonymous. So there was no sway either way for anybody or, you know, anybody's favorites or anything like that. And I took out all identifying information. Um, but they're so, so different. And you know, we're going to we're going to give the um, one thousand dollar cash prize to whoever uh, our, our committee has ranked as the highest um, points there. Um, but at the same time, I think we're going to still need to collaborate with one another and see, OK, what can we do to make this outstanding for a nationwide thing? What, what can we do to make this the best gas for your car? Um, the best 87 octane gas we can give you. Um, <laughs> we're, already, we're already getting grief from the from the uh, from the gallery, if you will, on uh, on our analogies here. But that's okay. Um, <laughs> so, so a winner is is the, uh, the announcement of the winner is eminent. Is that yes. correct? I would say as soon as you um, <clears throat> as soon as somebody <clears throat> finish their finish their homework. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, we're just one. We're just missing one rubric. Um, oh. and that should be by the end of the week, and then um, you know. The cash we've already fundraised for that, so that cash prize will be right out as soon as as soon as we get that winner announced. And then the next step is to cultivate and collaborate with one another um, to finalize the like the serious end product. And then we are going to go ahead and um, start giving out those boxes. Um, and you know, at this point, it might be a cash prize or a cash scholarship um, of $250 instead of the contents of the box, depending on how shipping and um, because we don't want to spend, you know, 25 mm -hmm. extra dollars on theft or shipping when somebody could find that same product locally um, or, you know, just uh, online um, or, or from a local store from them. Um, and yeah, we have, we'll be doing 50 of those 50, $250 boxes out to the brand new affiliates that have started this year. Um, and honestly, we've already this year, the party has already seen more than 50 new affiliates. And so that's going to be, um, hopefully we raise a little bit more than <laughs> enough for 50 because there's so many deserving new brand new affiliates and they've all, so many have started this year. It's I've lost track, honestly. No, some, 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 uh, Let's just say a majority of the states are doing an astonishing job of rolling out new affiliates. Um, we had, just as an example, because we've had some wonderful states on, we've, uh, we had Evan McMahon on from Indiana, who is, you know, Indiana's done, done an amazing job. We've had Pennsylvania. We've had Iowa. We, and I'm, I'm missing people. We've had Tennessee join us. All, all uh, Some established chair people, some new. Uh, mm -hmm. But but you mentioned an, an important element of this, and that's of course the fundraising. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here is have um, intelligent, you know, stewardship of shared resources. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds uh, vaguely socialistic, but on this show we don't use the word govern. We we try to replace it with steward. By the way, we're open to suggestions to even replace steward. Uh, the notion being, of course, that this is a uh, is this is an organization, the ASC that is very well run, very well administered, but at the same time is very collaborative. But talk about the fundraising aspect of that because um, that's critical. Last year, um, 
uh, Aaron Adams, who was on the committee last year, and she's doing other things this year, but uh, she was on the committee last year, went out and raised money uh, from a couple of great folks who, who sponsored a contest then. But, you know, this has become really a passionate part of ASC, which is raising money so that we can distribute it to, uh, you know, to individual uh, affiliates. Uh, what methodology can people give? What are some of the efforts that we've done for fundraising? Uh, give us a little picture of that. I have been on the phone uh, four hours a month with Tara DeSisto, the director of development for the party, uh, mm -hmm. since I was appointed chair. Um, so today I spent uh, two hours and I made 15 phone calls. Um, so you do the math, how, however many phone calls that is an hour. Um, some people don't answer. Some people uh, will give money after the fact. And I've also been emailing all of my contacts and asking everybody on the committee to reach out to their contacts. Um, it's been a lot of just, you know, ask and what's the, if you don't ask, you don't know, right? right? So right. what's the worst? It, it took me a while to say like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Somebody's going to say no. And then, okay, fine. Thank you so much for e even answering the phone call, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but no, we're doing really well. Uh, I set a very high fundraising goal uh, in uh, December for the 2020 year of $15,000. And we are about 9,500 already for the year. So I think we're doing pretty good. But I would love to be done before that uh, June LNC meeting. So hopefully people will um, click that donate button for me today. <laughs> oh, no, and, and here's the call. If, if folks have, have clearly... Uh, clearly defined a desirable outcome of, of, of LNC activities as, you know, messaging, fundraising, affiliate support, affiliate development. Well, this is an opportunity for people to, to help us with that. You've got a, a, a highly directed effort right now at reaching out to each individual state affiliate and then dropping that down to the, uh, to the county and the, and the local level. And we're going to go hyper local on that. And this, this show is really simply an outreach effort of that. We want folks to collaborate. We want folks to work together. We want folks to see this as ultimately, you know, 50 cars, but 50 cars in one fleet and yeah. one fleet, you know, moving in a similar direction. How about that? We're, right, right. You know, we're, we're never going to be born to be, you know, the, the, there are no lemmings in this party. Anyone who's been to a convention or a platform meeting knows that pretty, pretty well. Uh, no one follows orders. In fact, we all bristle uh, at orders. So this is a collaborative effort. If if we're going to reach out and do new affiliate development, which is really, I mean, ultimately the lifeline of the party. You know, when you talk about when you talk about, for example, fundraising. Well, if we've got local branches, tentacles, if you will, of a state affiliate reaching into counties, rural areas, urban areas, places where libertarians haven't been before, well, that's very often the first method then of developing membership, and of course, recruiting candidates. Right. And 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 so. While all of those are worthy goals, they're made far more simpler. They're, they're, our rate of success is far higher if, in fact, we have a local ongoing presence mm -hmm. in that region. And again, it can be a city. It can be, it can be the most urban. It can be the, the most rural. Uh, and, and again, states like Indiana and Pennsylvania, to name a few, um, have done wonderful jobs of putting in the right people with best practices mm -hmm. into, those into those communities so that the rate of failure has become very low. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's no longer good enough, is it, to say to a group of people here, do this and go set up an affiliate. We, we, we can't do that anymore, can we? No, I mean, and you can't just, you can't feed people to the wolves, honestly. Yeah. And uh, somebody mentioned in the, um, the comments here uh, about um, Hampton Roads and they, they, they're brand new. Um, and, you know, the state uh, guidance was, they had a little bit of a, a, a struggle there, um, but they ended up submitting a uh, entry in, oh gosh, you didn't judge yours yet. <laughs> they ended up <laughs> submitting one of the entries into the contest and it's really good. And so I was like, this is great. And especially for somebody who, you know, just brand new. Um, and that was the only entry that we had from somebody who was brand, brand new. Um, most of the ones that we got were, were very established and, um, and older. Uh, affiliates. So yeah, you can't just say, okay, well, you got three friends, go start an affiliate. Right. Um, you know, and there's also a, like, I've learned so much this year um, about all the, the state rules that you have. Each state is different. And some of the places you have to be a um, elected uh, selectman. What is it called? No, 
committee, precinct committee member. Um, mm -hmm. You have to have an election uh, in I Idaho um, for to be elected as a precinct committeeman to even start an affiliate. Um, and then in other states, you have to have a reorganizing and still in another election. And all these things are taxpayer funded, which don't even get me started on that. But there's other ones. That all you have to do is just file your paperwork with the uh, secretary of state or whatever the governing body is of your state, you know, Commonwealth. And, and, and equally important, you know, affiliates by definition ebb and flow. But I mean by that, you've got folks who are hyperactive and then they may move life challenges, life changes, right. you know, children come, children go, uh, you know, it, it can be any one of a number of issues. And so equal effort is being made. And maybe talk about this for a second <clears throat> at maintaining that institutional knowledge, because as you mentioned, just one of the aspects that's challenging to a grassroots political movement, wherever you are in this country is of course, local laws. And each of the, each state, depending which portion of the duopoly they're run by, depending on how vicious they are in trying to restrain competition and disenfranchise voters, right? We know where I'm going with this. Yeah. Um, each state's got its own ballot access laws. Um, and <clears throat> and as we all know, in so many states, Texas, New York, Illinois, Indiana, they're, they're constantly changing because the more successful we get, the more nervous they get. Mm -hmm. And they're right now they're very nervous, aren't they, Valerie? Okay. Uh, they're <laughs> very, very, very nervous. Uh, so how important is it to maintain that institutional knowledge that that's irreplaceable really? Right. And I think a lot of that is, uh, back in my, uh, in my banking days and, um, my previous job, uh, there's always the sessions called train the trainer. And I think there's a lot of that when, when somebody gets burned out, um, you know, right. they just leave. And there's, there's some times where, especially now that things are a lot more, uh, digitized, mm -hmm. there's a lot more uh, knowledge transfers going on. Uh, but I think before people would just get burned out and then the county party would just die. Right. And somebody's like, well, I don't even know how to do this because the old chair never even showed me like the password for the mail or whatever. Um, but I think mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot more, we're seeing like a lot less attrition right now. Um, even though people do still get burned out, but there's always somebody there. There's more libertarians. So there's more people right. there to pick up the, the pieces. If, if something like Hampton Roads, um, you know, right away, pick up the pieces and start a new affiliate when, when, uh, you need, when you need to, when you need to get in there and get it done, just, you just do it. And right. it's really, it's been really pretty awe-inspiring. There's, there's that old line. Necessity is the uh, mother of invention. The, <laughs> you know, it, and, and quite frankly, you know, and it, and it goes without saying, all oh, this is so obvious. Now, in retrospect, when 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 we're accomplishing, and and not only gains, but we're we're facing these issues and staring them down, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you the the rate of burnout, many hands, really minimizes that volunteer burnout. When you've got the same people, and you see at the national level, you see at the hyper local level, the issues are the same. It's just different scenarios, different backgrounds, different uh, different locales. But if you've got one person doing everything. Then that there's never a good result. We, yeah. we we have to we have to get more people involved, and and so again, it's a uh, in, in programming like they, they they refer to this as, as as circular, but more hands begets more work, begets you know healthier work environments, begets more hands, and okay. and and that ultimately is is what what we're trying to accomplish. Do, do we even have close to a count? And it'd be interesting if, because one of the challenges is on a state by state basis documenting all this. But yeah. I mean, I, do we even have any idea of how many affiliates are are even out there? No, we point? were we were starting to do that at the beginning of the term, and it's almost impossible because, um, you know, if you ask a state chair, some states they know, oh, we have five or whatever. Um, and I'm sure Evan, who is watching, knows how many he has right now. But there are states that are so large or, uh, you know, leadership has changed a couple of times. And so they're not exactly sure how many affiliated counties they have or how many that are like kind of affiliated and a little quiet. Um, and then how many is like uh, Texas? They have 52, I think I, that number might be a little off um, mm -hmm. that are in the queue to be interviewed to make sure that they are they've crossed their um, T's and dotted their I's to become affiliates. Um, right. And that's incredible. Like there's so 44 with 10 in the works. Good job, Indiana. Um, 
it's in, it's just incredible. And I, I did write a fundraising appeal for the National Party for affiliate support. Um, and I had a little diagram on there um, that I got a little bit of criticism on for not having one more piece on it. So I said, uh, more affiliates equals more libertarians equals more uh, elected libertarians. And right. then the last thing should have said equals more freedom. But I didn't put that one on there. So the next time I do that, I will add that little part. But, it is. And by, and by the way, Whitney Billy is going to be joining us in a, in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe on May 17th, uh, she'll be joining us for this show and, and can elaborate what it's like uh, to, to over, oversee and, and coordinate and herd and all those things. An affiliate, that's this, a state that's quite frankly larger than most nations <laughs> with, with 52 affiliates and counting. I, you know, dozens of major media markets. Uh, to account for in terms of both messaging and 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 recruiting candidates for uh, it's the challenges become so less intimidating. Yeah, if we if we can just get people on the ground in in in, in taking some level of ownership based on their state's framework mm -hmm. uh, for this. So that that's that that's why we're here. Right. I think Evan uh, and Evan and Whitney and uh, other uh, state chairs that are doing that kind of activity where they're saying, OK, how can we help you become a successful affiliate? I think that's so important. Um, you know, not every state does that. Not every state needs to do that. Um, some just have the, you know, the infrastructure already set up. But I think that that little bit of handholding right at the beginning, it lets people know that they're not alone. And I think also that's where our committee kind of comes in to say nationally, like you're not alone. We're going to leave you alone. I promise you, I don't want to bother you. Um, but we're here if you need anything, you know, and right. what can we do to help? What can, what can Pat do um, to get you on my, uh, get you on this show and uh, support you as an affiliate. So. Right. Right. And um, you know, and, and it'd be great at the next in attendance, uh, which I guess is going to be Reno. Um, hopefully we're well beyond um, well beyond all of the, uh, the madness by then. I think we will be, uh, I think all of us look forward to Reno and all of us look forward to an in-person, if you will, um, exchange of ideas and just make, taking it to that, to that next level. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, uh, again, from even just from a financial basis, having accelerated memberships, particularly in states, which are our membership due states or membership sharing states, uh, you know, it, it breeds a, a level of confidence um, mm -hmm. at, ev at every, every, every single level. Um, next project up is a, um, is another, there's the next contest up. Maybe just tell us a little bit about that. Next contest is, it, are we talking about the uh, small business? Right. <laughs> okay, so it was a, it's a spin up, not a contest. I don't think we're going to do a cash prize, but uh, Pat mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Uh, Demaris from Nebraska will be working um, on a side project here um, to spotlight how libertarians can help local businesses. And this is kind of spun up because um, so much weird stuff was happening with COVID. Like we're going to close this mom and pop shop, but we're going to, leave Walmart open and, you know, things like that. So how can we, and this isn't all just like spending money or getting takeout uh, because, you, you know, the hardware store probably needs some attention too. Um, about how we can be that libertarian. How can we help the local community and how can we be good examples for the community and stop having people say, oh, they're just, you know, they want to close all the schools and um, what, what else do people say? Oh, we're, 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 yeah. we're crazy wild corporatists and we we believe in vulture economics and yeah, yeah i can i can i I've, I've had <laughs> i had the unique pleasure of spending a day and a half petitioning in maine uh last summer and <laughs> i you know it, it was it was pretty impressive i you know as a native of the new york metropolitan area i thought i'd been insulted in just about every way possible but wow those mainers <laughs> holy cow uh, <laughs> that's what you get for petitioning outside of a whole foods right that was smart oh. yeah. <clears throat> but um you know it, it so much of, of our legitimacy as a philosophy spawns mm -hmm. not just from the philosophical side, but it's the old do as I say, not as I do. Right. Uh, avoiding that trap that the duopoly of, that lands in literally by the minute. In, in the last in the 20 minutes or half hour that we've been on the air, the duopoly has done something stupid to, uh, again, apostolize to individual Americans to sacrifice and then got out and 
grab some more something something for themselves the yeah. as libertarians the beauty of of getting elected officials and it's it's such hard work we have so much to overcome in so many ways uh and, and i'll always use Kara from the the city council person from burnsville minnesota as an example um she is a living proof of concept of the libertarian philosophy um, there is someone who stewards a community's resources as a libertarian and and is an embodiment of that and is a living example, if you will, to a lot of people who have never met a libertarian. And that's one of the biggest challenges because the it's it's easy for the duopoly to operate in ignorance. They can define us. They can define our narrative because for so many people, they've never dealt with a libertarian that all of a sudden, for example, in a city like Providence where, you know, the libertarians are are advocating for criminal justice reform. And, and, and a community steps back and goes, I didn't think you guys went in that direction. I, it's, it's the core of our existence. Right. So, um, yeah. When I, when I started dating um, Nick, my husband, um, I told my mom, oh, he's a libertarian. She was like, oh, those are the weirdos that stand in front of the DMV and ask you to sign your papers for Lyndon LaRouche. Get away from him. And, uh, <laughs> and I asked, uh, do you know who Lyndon LaRouche is? And he was like, yeah, this is like, don't just tell your mom, like, we'll talk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, that's the stigma. And and I myself have something in my head planned, which I'll share now for an example of somebody else is wondering how they can um, participate in the next spin up here. Um, there is a business that opened a restaurant that opened downtown Manchester here in New Hampshire uh, that opened during the pandemic. Uh, despite all odds, you know, a lot of places were not completely closed here in New Hampshire. So they had a little bit of an advantage, um, but they've been very successful and they haven't shut down. They shut down like for a week with a couple of positive COVID cases, but they have been very successful, remained open. Um, and the next door business, uh, they do a lot of cooperative, cooperative uh, sales and things like that. It's a bookstore, which is owned by um, a, a black man who participates in the um, Black Lives Matter rallies and things like that. Um, so I thought, well, this would be a great collaboration. We could go there to the restaurant as a meeting, um, you know, speak, have the business owners speak to us about both business owners actually speak to us about how can libertarians help your small business? What can we do? Because, you know, what tax problems are you facing that you want us to be focused on or what um, zoning things are happening downtown Manchester? What, what, what is your city council person not doing that as libertarians we can do to help? Or, you know, what can we do to make a positive impact on these two businesses that are run by two very different kinds of people um, that are in the lifeblood of our downtown area? So that's something, you know, just an idea for other people. <laughs> no, I, I, absolutely. You know, and, you know, another case in point is you've, um, is, is to openly advocate for small business, but not just in the cliched, Hashtag support small business. Right. I went out to dinner, right? I mean, we, we have a we have a, a crisis here in Rhode Island where, incredibly enough, uh, you've got businesses, restaurants having you know, crucified during this this process, and yet they're they, you know because they're behind in certain taxes and fees, they can't get their liquor license renewed. Oh, right. And, and I said to the governor, literally, I said to the governor, "Are you kidding me?" You know, I'd, I'd been asking our prior governor, who incredibly enough is the Secretary of Commerce. Another story, long story. Uh, now, you know, are, are you going to do a, on a watch list businesses that had been model citizens mm -hmm. and now are running afoul of government regulations to make sure that this doesn't happen? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, bull bleep. Of course they didn't. And of course, all of a sudden, these businesses who through no fault of their own, find themselves in this position where because they haven't paid the financial homage, if you will, mm -hmm. to, to the powers behind our state, uh, they're, they're now they can't sell liquor. I mean, that's a death sentence for many restaurants. Right. So, so, you know, so that's an area example where you can, pre you can maintain outside pressure. Um, mm -hmm. There are, you know, you can, you can advocate against fees. I mean, I mean, why should any company pay a minimum corporate tax in a year in which quite frankly, they've been had minimum activity. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's uh, flash mobs are another another great example. Organize a in, in some cities here they call it crash mobs. Other cities they call it flash mobs. But put out a call for every libertarian and every libertarian friend to show up at a business. We call mm -hmm. first, but show up at a lunchette or a cafeteria or a or a dining hall or or a, a, a furniture store or a bookstore 
yeah. and show up together on a Saturday and let the cash registers ring. You know, that's a kind of community spirit. Yeah, right. Well, we, exactly. we, we, we can display, if you will, our, yes, we are capitalists. I am unapologetically free market capitalist. Right. Emphasis free market. <laughs> and, and, and the question being during this next period, how can we deliver business activity? How can we, for example, put people in touch with groups that have, you know, people who want to be employed? We've got a crisis now across America where the government, in their infinite wisdom, has decided to disincentivize people from going to work. Who thought? I mean, here's the irony of the year has got to be businesses that somehow managed to survive a government intrusion into the marketplace, which is unprecedented since really the Civil War, right? How, how, or, or and making World War II look sort of like a, a day in the park. How can we do that? All right. And then disincentivize people to go to work by offering uh, above market wage, above market unemployment insurance. Right. Uh, right. You, you, wow. Congratulations, government. <laughs> you know, you, they're, they're hell bent, it seems like, to kill these people. Literally. Right. Now we're all like, everybody's getting just want to stay in their house. And that's, we need to get out there. We need to be spending money. And, you know, the stimulus, stimulus checks aren't supposed to be safe. Let's get out there. Right. And <clears throat> what, what happens after this uh, elevated unemployment compensation right. is done? And one day it will have to come to an end. Yeah. Uh, what happens if there's nothing left for people to get to work for? And that's a crisis that's being faced around the country in virtually every aspect of retail, food, consumer right. products, whatever. So perhaps it's time to to reach into the community and find and develop a, a list of people who are looking for work, who want to take advantage of the situation and and work for probably heightened and more aggressive wages. So there, right. there's there's infinite amount of ideas that folks can engage in, all right, to just to to amplify our philosophy mm -hmm. in the real world. I mean, if you go back to Clinton, remember it's the economy, stupid, um, <laughs> which you know he, he nailed it. They had the war room. He, guy got to be president after losing it. He he lost to, to be governor of Arkansas, and a few years later, he's president of these United States. So, uh, you know, there, it's and, and and by doing these things, I mean, talk talk to me. We only got a couple minutes left, but talk to me about what kind of connection that makes in the real marketplace of ideas, as opposed to just another group of politicians pandering. You know, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> um. Getting out and we had this um, great weekend uh, here. This guy, this is kind of a little bit backstory. Um, this guy was like, oh, my work made me work from home. And, you know, uh, my kids were all stuck in the house because schools were closed. And and what do we do? We're, we're stuck inside. Let's go to the park. And then they go to the park and it's just a disaster, right? Because the city takes care of the park. So it's not very good. Um, and so he started getting volunteers together every weekend. And then he started getting these um, services, the businesses that were, that needed to do work, um, that were taking the PPP loans, whatever, um, the PPP, PPE, um, the loans to pay their employees, but the employees weren't working, right? And they don't want to lay the people off. They want to keep them employed. Um, and so they were having them do this as, as a service, fix the, you know, green uh, plant trees, clear out the brush and get them back in, uh, into doing work instead of going home, collecting unemployment, like inflated unemployment and like, you know, losing skills, losing benefits and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just, we saw that this weekend and like, what a great example of somebody seeing a problem that the government was causing and fixing it without bothering anybody without, you know, all on his own. And then, uh, working together then with several other businesses to, they did a bike giveaway and they worked with these other businesses to sponsor 12 bikes for children in the, uh, in Manchester. And it just was, we, we went to it. It was just like so overwhelming like, to see that much good come out of it, just all being volunteers, you know, right. and no government, but I mean, the mayor was there and she probably took credit for a lot of stuff, but she didn't do anything. <laughs> they always do. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and so someone once said to me, if you, if you rob somebody of a hundred dollars and give back 50, um, that does not make you, Either A, a good person, uh, or B, a charitable person. That simply makes you a thief. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, I've gotten to know over the roughly 10, 12 years that I've been involved at some level in the Libertarian Party, amazing people who have the biggest hearts imaginable. 
mm -hmm. uh, and, and just give of themselves freely. Yes. Uh, time, money. Uh, for, for some folks in this movement, there are literally no obstacles, no barriers. We need to channel that energy as a, as a movement mm -hmm. and put it on display, not for the now famous virtue signaling that goes on in the duopoly all the time, uh, not to virtue signal, but to use as an example of right. what it means when you agree to something like the non-aggression principle, what it means when you, you talk about self-ownership, what it means when you talk about community and stewardship, what it means when you talk about you know, being a free will, but mm -hmm. at the same time giving because you choose to give. Right. And, and that's, we amplify that. We can finally take over the world and then leave everybody the hell alone. Right. <laughs> yeah. totally so. Just being, I mean, maybe I am a voluntarist, but um, I, I, I very much agree with that. And also I think it, I've changed a lot as, you know, having really young children, um, because my mom used to always say like, do as I say, not as I do. Um, mm -hmm. But we actually, we want the children to emulate our behavior. And so mm -hmm. we do, we do service projects with the kids. Um, and, you know, we're going to this guy who did the park thing. Um, he's got people volunteering to do uh, plant trees because they cleared out all the gross brush and stuff and they want to put some good ones in. Um, and so we're going to go and do that. And what's it, the cost is zero dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the kind of thing that I hope that, all affiliates, not just, you know, directed by the affiliate support committee or whatever. Um, I hope that everyone will, will do that and do service projects and show people, you know, libertarians actually care. And we don't really, it's not just about taxes or being against the state. It's about making our community a better place and right. a place that we can all live together. And, and understanding that the, the primary function of the state is to accumulate power. It is not ultimately to do well by people. And, and the sheer power of individual efforts will always, always win over the efforts of forced labor. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's what, it, what's defines us as human. Uh, yeah. Valerie, tell us again, how folks can reach out to you and out to the committee. If, if they'd like to get involved, uh, uh, listen, I think, I think you tell this is very tightly run. Uh, a little bit of money will go a long way. We are, uh, I think the term parsimonious, how about, can I drop the parsimonious bomb? Um, the, the, the are th thrifty. That's another good one. We are thrifty, uh, here at the affiliate support committee. We, yes. um, they, there, there, there will be no foolishness. We, we want to put the money directly in the hands of people who will then use it to amplify and conduct the type of work on behalf of affiliates that will grow the party and, and support our philosophy. So how can, how can folks reach out to you? So you can email me um, at Valerie.sarwark at LP.org. Um, if you prefer to it's, uh, text me or call me, then you can send me a message on my Facebook page, um, which is, there it is. Thank you, John. Um, and I'll give you my cell phone number. I just don't want to put that out right now because who knows who's listening. Um, but I always tell people I don't always respond. I don't always answer, but I will get back to you because sometimes it's a little cuckoo here with you know the four kids. Um, and this week is April break, so it's extra noisy. Um, but yeah, that uh, we are very tight with our money, um, and none of it will be wasted. And if we have any left over, then it's going to go back to the affiliates. And then we have, um, you know, big plans for 2021 too. we get or 2022, um, because I still will be the chair of this committee into that year. And so we'll have a, a different goal for that short time of, uh, until Reno, um, and get some more stuff done for the next year. Um, Oh, and I wanted to say uh, this is not from the affiliate support committee, but speaking of knowledge transfers and uh, in trainings, um, all the regional trainings are coming up. And I highly, highly, highly encourage everyone to attend their regional training. It's free. Um, and there's a wealth of knowledge going on there with um, Kara, Tara, Apollo. Um, who else is going to be there? Michelle McCutcheon. Um, I think there's a couple other people, depending on where you're at. Um, lots and lots and lots of good information that literally costs you nothing and gives you so much, so much information. So that would be helpful for, and I think one of the things is like how to run your affiliate uh, successfully. So definitely something that everybody should be looking at. Excellent. Well, just a reminder, uh, Kevin, the new chair of Oklahoma is going to be here next Monday. Uh, Tim, the chair of Wisconsin is going to be there on the 10th. And of course, Whitney, 
chair of Texas is going to be joining us on the 17th. So we've got a full lineup of affiliates coming up. By the way, folks, if you are the chair or a representative of an affiliate in the Libertarian Party, we welcome your involvement. Early on, we're focusing on states. So if, uh, and it's tricky, this is convention season. So, you know, there's the normal transfer, if you will, uh, between past chair people and, and new ones. Reach out to us, please. And of course, if you've got candidates who are running, this is kind of a quiet time of the year. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting geared up in terms of our, our, you know, our candidates corner show on Friday nights for the big 2022 midterm elections. But in the meantime, if there's special elections, off year elections, and you'd like to participate in any, any bit of the LPTV programming that's out there, please let us know. Reach out to myself, reach out to Valerie, and your, your respective regional uh, member on the LNC, your res respective state chair. Uh, it, it's all good. We want people to be involved. LPTV is turning out as it grows and sort of evolves to be a, a really wonderful tool for the party to reach out across boundaries to, to create uh, relationships between candidates, organizations, the party at large. Uh, it, it's, it's turning into an amazing resource. You know, there's shows every night. You've got, uh, so Valerie, you've, you've also got, uh, you're involved with a show where you've got the LNC on, of course. Uh, Literally every night, and, and the programming is only going to grow. This is just the beginning, folks. So, uh, you know, we look forward to everyone's participation at every level. So, Val, listen, thanks thanks for joining us tonight and uh, and, and sort of giving this a real kickoff. And, um, you know, everyone, let, let's let's reach out to her. Let's overwhelm her, if you will, with money and support. How about that? Is, is yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> Positivity, folks. You know, if, if you look at the growth that's occurring across this nation, uh, at Libertarian Affiliates, if you look at this incredible crop of down-ballot candidates, I would posit to you that despite the internal challenges that are always a function of a political movement, that the party is is poised for explosive growth. Yeah. Let's just keep making it happen. Yeah. Folks, you've been listening to the Libertarian Affiliate Spotlight, a production of the Libertarian Party Affiliate Support Committee. Our guest tonight, of course, is Valerie Sarwak. She is the chair. And, of course, the Libertarian National Committee, Joseph Bicham Hemden. He is the national chair. And, as always, a big thank you to John Gapso on the big board who provides all the graphics and, and holds this together technically. Some nights, uh, like tonight, is a little bit more challenging than others. But, again, uh, John comes to us as a volunteer a couple of nights a week now after a full and rewarding day at work, and we thank you for that john my name is pat ford i'm your host listen i look forward to seeing you friday night nine o'clock on the libertarian party facebook page as well as lptv reach out to lptv and like the page so on nights like tonight when we're having a few technical hiccups you know you can also catch our programming and it's a it's a great repository of all of our programming folks have a great week a safe week give them hell let's have freedom in our lifetime good night